a lot of sugar, a dash of spice, candied lice, just, just a little bit extra. Uh, what else? A unicorn horn and a pinch of pulverized pixies. Mm. I do love a good dessert every now and then. Or always. Ah! You're back. Close the door quick. Don't you hear the howling wind? There's a candy storm on the way to Spectre Art Space. The Spectre Spectre has officially commenced the candy conjuring. Well, last time you were here to hear the story, but this time you're here while it's unfolding. You're braver than I gave you credit for, I guess. Well, sit down, get mildly comfortable. You'll have to stay here until this settles down. This will be a perfect time for me to catch you up. You already know last October and November when anyone who ventured through Spookadelia and its origin were sent on a quest to find the crone and to seek her wisdom in the crone throne forest. What do you mean, what was their mission? To help save humankind from the Spectre Spectre and their own humanity, of course. How do you not remember all of this? Do you at least remember the Spectre Spectre? The spirit that haunts the walls of Spectre Art Space, you know, the one with the power to weave in and out of our realm, the ghost realm, and the realm where monsters roam? Okay, I'm, I'm just making sure. Well, the Spectre's purpose has become hunting the most rotten of the humans and beasts, and yes, her reward to herself is still turning them into furniture for her trophy room. But I guess Spectra Spectre has been feeling like her efforts alone are not enough. I mean, humans and monsters are still destroying the planet, chopping its forests and polluting its oceans, endangering innocent inhabitants, and spoiling young minds rotten with television, politics, and, you know, dark entities of the sort. Spectra Spectre figured it was time to summon some help and jump through all these hoops to conjure up its partner of crime and BFF, Sugar Plum Scary. If you don't know her, she loves using her deceivingly sweet magic and spells. And oh my gosh, the candy zombies. They're like her posse, but they can be so rude. Well, she uses them to rid the world of rotten souls. So I don't know if you noticed on the way here, but the Candy Conjuring basically is freezing over Purgatory and its ghostly inhabitants, and the time and space portal has shifted dimensions completely due to that confectious candy tornado you nearly brought in here. Yeah, I'm not ready to forgive you. And on top of everything, those loyal candy zombies I told you about, they've overtaken everything in order to allow safe and comfortable passage for Sugar Plum Scary to enter the realm of the Spectre Spectre. Now, I have it on good authority, do not ask me my sources, that the Spectra Spectre decorated its home in preparation for its BFF's arrival. But obviously, Sugar Plum Scary does not travel lightly. Her sweet home already appeared in the middle of the forest. I mean, literally. Gingerbread walls constructed themselves and sugary gumdrops popped right into place. There was frosting magically dripping over the edges and decadent candies decked the walls. Yeah, Sugar Plum Scary made herself right at home. Her candy magic is spreading all over the land into the Crystal Cave of Wonder and throughout the Crone Throne Forest. I mean, I mean, everyone can see. This is all to tempt gluttonous humans and monsters away from reaching the Crone Throne. Look, I think there's a lull in the storm, so you better go while you can, but be careful. Don't be tempted with that just one bite trick. I mean, not unless you're looking for a career change and want to join the army of candy zombies. Or, you know, you could just end up in a cake for the Spectra Spectre. Sure, it'll be a sweet ride, but I mean, after that, do you think you'll continue to seek salvation in the Crone Throne Forest after that? More likely, Sugar Plum Scary and the Spectra Spectre will just serve you your just dessert.